I think death would be easier than a divorce. It's very frustrating to have gone for help and then come out with your family destroyed. We have serious problems in our family law court system. Getting divorced is far from easy. Litigation lasted for over a year. I was married only four months, and my divorce has lasted over six and a half years. Close to eight years. Eight years. Why is divorce so difficult? People can get as much justice as they can afford. Most people cannot afford any justice at all. What's wrong with that? This is a business. The more you charge, the more people are willing to pay. All right, folks, um, divorce, it's a terrible problem, uh, and uh, that's on the surface. But uh, what you just saw goes uh, way, way beneath the surface, and um, it is a, a very interesting uh, documentary. Dr. Drew Pinsky, of course, former star of the TV show Celebrity Rehab and host of uh, Love Lines, uh, joins us to talk about his new documentary, Divorce Corp. Um, hello, doctor. Good evening. Good to talk to you. You bet. All right. So uh, talk about this. I mean, I, you know, I went through a divorce, luckily for me and, and for everyone involved. Uh, we're friends. It was amicable. Uh, you know, we both agreed we didn't have that much. We don't want to give it all to the lawyers. But um, there are horror stories, as you well know. Yeah, we, I like to put you under the microscope and figure out how you were able to avoid the legal system. Because, uh, it, you know, I... You mentioned Loveline, and I, I'm back doing podcast again with Adam Carolla, and he and I were talking about this the other night, and he said, you know, uh, my wife and I would agree if we were ever to get a divorce to go ahead and split things up and, you know, give the kids what they need. And uh, But as soon as her friends got around her and said, you know, you need protection. You need to take a look at this. This is complicated. You need to talk to an attorney. As soon as that thought enters the equation, there is a slippery – well, slippery slope is not a, a – vivid enough image to describe the hill you roll down and the hell you roll into. It is a world that is devoid of constitutional rights. It's a world where only the participants, meaning the attorneys and the evaluators and the judges, benefit. And often people, uh, whatever it is they're trying to divide up, ends up with a negative number attached to it just because of the burdens of divorce. Yeah, and, and I guess Divorce Corp, Divorce Corporate, I mean, it's a business. It's, a, it's an industry. It's an industry, and it's an industry that's sort of uh, shadowy. Uh, it exists in and unto itself, and it's separate from the usual legal privileges we all enjoy. And so horrible things can happen, and that's what we sort of chronicle in this documentary is when things, in, and not unusual things, by the way, you can't imagine how, how bad they get. Now, who's, who's to blame here? I mean, is it the, the lawyers? Everybody, you know, uh, has a bad thing to say about lawyers. And, yes, uh, I love to blame the lawyers. Yeah, but, is, but, <laughs> but, but is, it the, is it not the, the, the judges as well? Absolutely. Well, and it's, and it's people from my profession, too, who participate on the evaluative side and charge extraordinary amounts for uh, evaluating the needs of children and the needs of the family for a sort of an unclear purpose, unclear ends, other than to sort of smash your opponent. <laughs> That's really all they're trying to do. Uh, and to squeeze more money out of people when if, oftentimes there's no money left over anyway. Um, I, I, I ended up, uh, as a result of this study, feeling pretty bad about the judges. It's, it's a little chummy what's going on there, and uh, that, that part I found very unsettling. Uh, the rest of it is just what you expect. It, it needs reform. It needs a uh, constitution to be re reclaimed, uh, and it needs – and the other thing, I, people need to be aware of it. I'm always in favor of uh, phenomenon that will reduce the probability that someone will get into a divorce. Uh, I mean, we need to commitment is something that we've sort of lost track of, keeping families together through time. Here's a good reason not to split up, to take a look at this video, uh, this documentary, and magically you'll be a little less interested and more interested in staying together. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, was it always this bad? I mean, divorce has become more prevalent, obviously. I mean, it's over 50 percent of couples, I think, get divorced now, which is horrific, mostly for the kids. But as you point out here, for, for everyone involved. Uh, but but how has this cottage industry, uh, when did it when did it, you know, uh, appear? When it, did this it, become such a big business? It, it's been evolving over many decades. And it's it's been the latter half of the 20th century where it spiraled out of control, obviously. And, and of course, divorce became more common place but 
again in this documentary you look at other we look at other countries who don't have this problem scandinavia sweden magically don't have this problem uh now why they, is that i mean they were divorces they don't have the, yeah, they don't have this system attached to it this self-serving system so what do they just get divorced and they, they go their separate way? Up, they divorce they go on their way yeah and, uh, and now divide things up but that's usually the problem who i mean theoretically who gets the kids who gets the money who gets the house so how do they do it without lawyers without a judicial system how do, they're just friendlier people they, they yeah, how do they no, they're, work they're they're adults and they they have a system uh it's not a system that's self-serving it's it's in the interest of the children, and it uh, doesn't um, encumber the divorce process in, with any sorts of industry. Or the, again, it's the corporation, it's the divorce corp attached to this that is serving its own needs. That's the point. If you don't have something there um, feeding on the process, the process can actually be done in a much more simple yeah. way. Yeah, what we did, we, I mean, we sat down, we, we knew what we had. Uh, well, I'm not saying I, again, was, I want to put you out of the yeah, microscope. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a piece. It was a piece of cake, Doc. Not by any means, but we, you know, we sat down. We agreed at what we think would be best for our son and what we th thought would be the best for us because we didn't want it to all go to lawyers. We knew we could be battling for a long time, and they would take it all. And and it's funny. My, my, my attorney uh, came up with a figure, you know, arbitrarily for for alimony. Just for instance, and just like I know a doctor here in New York, Doctor Vanini, who, who does a radio show, he says your health is in your own hands. Well, everything's in your own hands. I said to that the lawyer, I said. Uh-uh, that's too much, and for too long, for too many years. So I changed it, and I got what I changed it to. You gotta, you gotta be so careful, you know. Just don't go on everybody's recommendation. Where is this gonna? Where and when could people see this? Uh, it is, I believe, the release date is January 10th. Let me, let me get that uh, precisely. It's not. Uh, it is January 10th, 2014. It'll be in theaters nationally. You can check it out at divorcecorp.com. We have a website. You can see some. Uh, some snips, some uh, get you a little taste of what this is all about. But it's something that um, I, I don't know any other way to say it. But you have to see it to believe it. To really hear these stories and really see how the thing the system operates, it, it takes a little time to lay it out. But when you see it all, it, it's sort of stunning. And you'll see some sort of nationally known attorneys uh, who participate in this thing. Well, I saw Gloria Allred for one. Gloria comes in. Yeah. And says, this is this is not good. This is a yeah. problem. But yeah. it is the way it is, and so I'm a part of it. But it should be reformed. We're talking to Dr. Drew Pinsky uh, here on the uh, Steve Malsberg Show. Dr. Drew, of course. Um, it, it, one this question regarding this before we move on to something else, and that is, how can we? I mean, is it too late to, to turn back the clock to keep families together, to prevent divorce? I mean, not only are we, uh, we are where we are as a society, uh, but if you look at society now, the whole mindset for many women that they don't need a man, uh, you know, they're working, uh, take care of yourself, I could have a baby without a father. I mean, are, are, is the fa whole family structure just going out the window? Well, it's the, obviously a complicated question, and, and uh, I will have to give my own personal opinion rather than any sort of... No, no, that's uh, what I'm looking for, sure. No, uh, but, you know, I, I'm a scientist, and so I like to come from objective okay. point of view, but I, I'm, I'm going to go subjective here. It's, you know, uh, just, you know, self thing. Sure. And uh, I, I, certainly things are a change. <laughs> there, there's no doubt that our, our biological circumstances are changing. We're in control of our fertility and in control of our, uh, you know, when and when and how we have babies. And maybe that will even, hopefully that will become even better so women can push that back even far, farther potentially and focus on their career. Uh, women are not dependent on men. These are all good things. The, what children need, though, however, has got to become front and center again. Uh, and I think we'd even have arguments about that, of course, but, uh, and how long they need it, and you know, do we have to stay married our entire life and all this kind of nonsense. But just, if we just keep it simple and stay focused on the needs of children, parents need, they need two parents. They need two people. Uh, I, there's a guy named uh, Alan, I'm blanking on his name now, University of Wisconsin, who did uh, these tremendous uh, longitudinal studies on this on attachment and followed kids through time into adulthood based on their attachment uh, profiles in early childhood and when he was uh, i was listening to him at a conference once and he was asked you know for these single mothers what's the one thing you would give them to increase the probability they could enhance the attachment and outcome for these kids and he said it's very simple a supportive partner a sustained supportive partner over time not a husband just a adult <laughs> and a, a committed adult 
And so uh, I well, think I'm sure that, a father would be the, the, the uh, person well, of I choice. Believe, I think that's optimal. I, yeah. I'm not sure that I, I don't can't objectively say that we can't we really can't say that a male and a female are the optimal uh, alternative. You, you don't you don't think that you could say with certainty that uh, the, the most optimal living conditions with all things being equal uh, is, uh, is, a, is a mother and a father for a child? I, I, I believe that to be true, but I can't say that yet. People are studying those things. Uh, and what we can say is what's optimal is two adults. That we can definitely say. Again, from, an, from a scientific point of view, people are studying these things very carefully. Um, and again, you know, could you have two males or two females and then other uh, male or female figures outside of the home that serve whatever gender needs there are there? We don't know. Right. We don't fully know that yet, but right. uh, two adults we can say for sure. Let me ask you before I let you go, sir, and you've been generous with your time, uh, and that is uh, Phil Robertson, Duck Dynasty, the the controversy that's uh, being talked about by just about everybody I've uh, have run into today and everything I've watched and listened to today. Um, he was, uh, you know, suspended, say let go uh, be, from his uh, show because of remarks he made about homosexuality. And uh, we have a Facebook page with 500,000 likes supporting uh, Phil Robertson. We have one sponsor saying they support uh, Phil Robertson. What, what did he say exactly? I, I, saw the, I saw the headline. I didn't hear the what it was all about. Okay, well, what he, he, he talked about, uh, and I, I could uh, give you the, uh, the quote here, uh, about homosexuality, and he said, it seems to me a vagina as a man would be more desirable than a man's anus. That's just me. I'm just thinking uh, there's more there, blah, blah, blah. He also talked about, uh, paraphrasing now what's next, bestiality, multiple partners, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, um, you know, so... Uh, he's not spewing hate. He's spewing... Ignorance, <laughs> frankly, uh, and so he's entitled to his opinion. I, I think. I, however, you know, if, if he hurts people, we have to be careful. Um, it's it's a very strange thing for him to say. It's almost comical, uh, and which is what we look to those guys for. Uh, however, um, it, it's a it's you know. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's a I, biblical I, I it's a biblical other... belief that you know that 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 a man should be with a woman. Uh, so he's 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 a, a, a unashamed Christian and has made that point very clear. I've uh, never listen, watched this series. And let me and let me follow on with that very issue. I, I believe I, I believe free speech is under attack in this country, and I'm very concerned about that. To the extent that he's free to say what he wishes, as long as it's not hate or doesn't harm other people, uh, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. You're not entitled to that. But I do think we've gone, uh, we've gotten, we've become quite uh, aggressive with our attacks on free speech, and that concerns me. And do you think Let it's one side? It do you think it's one sided? Do you think uh, uh, there are certain no, things you can't place. say more than uh, other things you can't say? It's all over the place. There's all kinds of things under attack. Believe me, I, I, I get attacked all the time. So yeah. let's leave it there. All right, all right, doctor. We'll watch you uh, uh, on the uh, divorce uh, corp. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Nice to talk to you. You bet. Take care, Bye. Dr. Drew Pinsky, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, here on the uh, Steve Molesberg show. Uh, very interesting about uh, about divorce, and uh, we're going to talk more about Duck Dynasty. Uh, certainly, as the uh, the program progresses, we have Wayne Besson coming up um, in the next hour, and Coulter in the five o'clock hour, and uh, we will get uh, their opinions on, uh, on on what was said. We'll also uh, talk about it uh, amongst ourselves as well. Um, but uh, coming up next on the Big Steve Malsberg Show, ladies and gentlemen, uh, will be uh, some sound bites uh, from <laughs> Louis Farrakhan. Louis Farrakhan, ladies and gentlemen, defending uh, what was said by a, a rapper fairly recently uh, about Jews. You're not going to want to miss it. Leave it to uh, Louis to defend him. Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV and radio. The Steve Mal